It is a pleasure to have our next guest. Dennis Pitta now joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Dennis, thanks for joining us. How are you today, my friend? What's going on, guys? I like this group here. <laughs> <laughs> good energy in, in the studio. It is the way it should be. With with the three of us, this thing is all good karma. Now that you know, with Jerem not here, because I know you and Jerem that whole deal, you know. So yeah, no, Jerem and I are on very poor terms, but <laughs> it, it's great to hear two just refreshing, intelligent voices behind the mic. <laughs> Well, we, we appreciate that, and we're glad that we could give you a stress-free interview that you don't have to worry about some of that, uh, that nonsense that goes on with Jerem. Uh, let's, yeah, let's, I appreciate it. Let's ask you this. Obviously, it's Super Bowl week. This is a fun week for everybody, fans, people that are involved in the game itself, the NFL in general. It's just a fun week. Explain what Super Bowl week is like especially as somebody that's played in this, that's experienced, the, the media that surrounds it, the preparation, what's this week like? Well, I'm glad you can look at it and, and say it's a fun week because <laughs> as a player, I don't think the word I would use is fun. Um, I think I would use stressful. Uh, I would use, um, you know, anxious, um, nervous. I think when you get to this week in particular, now last week, was different for players. They were still in Kansas City or San Francisco uh, going through their normal routine of practice. Uh, the media was, was starting to build, but, but nothing like when they arrived into Miami for this week. Um, and, and, and it feels, coming off a huge AFC or NFC championship win, the, the energy in the building is going crazy. I mean, it's a great week of practice, and you're excited. And then you get to the host city. And you see the media hoopla. I mean, it's, it's insane. You have your Tuesday big media day, and you're sitting up on these podiums, and there's just millions of, of reporters. And, I mean, you're being asked questions from guys on the Food Network, uh, you know, <laughs> guys from uh, the Spanish Network down in, in Mexico or whatever it may be. I, I probably totally butchered that um, for, for the Spanish Networks. But you, you have so many different media outlets. I mean, People that don't even have anything to do with football or sports in general are there asking you questions. I was getting questions about um, how to tie um, a bowline knot because they knew I was an Eagle Scout. And I was asked to, you know, from the food now, or what's my favorite food to make or whatever it may be. There's just so many crazy questions and, and just, it's, a, it's just a media hoopla is, I guess, the best way to describe it. So, once you get there and all the craziness, you're just being uh, whisked from one end to the next, for doing interviews, trying to get to practice, trying to focus a little bit on the game. It's just a very stressful uh, week of preparation, in my opinion, because you also have to look at what's upcoming. You have this massive game, the biggest game on the biggest stage you'll ever play. And to say that you're not nervous and a little bit stressed out about not playing your best in that game would be a lie. And so um, – I appreciate the fact that you can say it's a lot of fun, though, Jason. I think um, <laughs> I, guess, I, I think I think as a player, it, it would be nice to to have that approach. It's but, you know what, Dennis, it's, though, I'm gonna I'll be honest with you. This year, there is a there is a lot more stress involved for me because I'm from I'm originally from Kansas City, so I am a Chiefs fan. I have never watched a Super Bowl with my team in it, so the stress level for this season has been ramped up significantly. Yeah, and listen, it's a long season, and the last thing, especially as a player, you want to do is play four, five, six extra weeks, really, uh, once you enter the postseason, and get to the Super Bowl and lose. There's literally nothing worse, because now you, you beat yourself up for that long, and you go to the Super Bowl, and you have nothing to show for it. Now everybody says, oh, you want a conference championship. Guess what? That literally means nothing. Yep. And it's all about the Super Bowl. And so, fortunately, the one Super Bowl I went to, we won. And so I didn't have to worry about uh, getting to that game and losing and, and all that goes into that. And so I got to celebrate. It was all worth it. Uh, you went through all the stress and the, and the physical pain and everything to get to that point, and, and it was all worth it. So uh, I'm fortunate to be on that end. But listen, there's a whole other team. that There's going to be some BYU player, someone affiliated with BYU in this game that's going to go home a loser. And that's, that's the unfortunate part about this game. You work so hard. You do everything right to this point. You might play your best game of the season, and, and you might walk away a loser. And so that's a tough pill to swallow, and that's part of the stress that goes into it because the last thing you want to do in this game is walk away a loser.
Dennis, I, you know, I was all excited about it, but I'm nervous now. Like, you, you, just, you just made me think that this whole thing is miserable. And I, I'm trying to inject I, I some reality some, into I know. Your, your, your fandom here because wow. you have to understand what the players and the coaches and everybody around the organization is going through. I mean, it, there's a lot. And then you have to deal with family and, and their travel and trying to take care of them. And you, you get this whole welcome pack and it's got all the tickets and everything for family for all the different events. I completely forgot to give that to my wife. <laughs> I lost it. I didn't know where it was. So she had a, a stressful time trying to get, you know, contact all the Ravens people to try and get where she needed to be without any tickets. I mean, it was. It was a mess, and, and that's really what the week is for players. It's a little bit of a mess, and you don't you don't want to think about it like that because, oh, it's the Super Bowl, it's this great event, but behind the scenes, it's, it's a tough week, and when it's all said and done, you're just so happy to be sitting there a Super Bowl champion um, when all is said and done. Well, I, I, I hope... So, so, Dennis, my dad always used to tell me growing up, whenever you're in a big situation, take time to step back and enjoy it for just a moment, even if it's only for a few seconds. And we were playing Michigan for a national championship, and I remembered those words while I was waiting for a play to come in from the sideline. And I stepped back, and I spun around, and I looked, and I thought, okay, this is really cool. And then I had to get back to work. So I could enjoy it for 10 seconds. Please tell me there was some time in that game that you actually got to say, okay, this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really good advice, and, I, and, and I, I think I wish I had maybe heard that or had that in the back of my mind throughout the week. Um, but I, I think I did. You, sit, you come out in pregame, and you want the as a football player, and, and really as a coach and organization, you want everything to feel the same. You don't want players to think, "Oh my gosh, this is such a bigger moment than I'm used to," because then you start to play outside of yourself and try to press a little bit and, and do things that that are going to potentially cause problems on the field. And so you want it to feel like the normal routine and be the same and just you have to do your job. You get out there for warm-ups, and it's unlike any game. I mean, the NFL is a big deal, right? Game in and game out every week. You get to the Super Bowl, and you're out there in warm-ups, and you're just looking around at the sideline, and you just see celebrity after celebrity after celebrity lining the sideline, which is, you know, you'll see a couple celebrities at your game here and there, but it's just, you realize how big of a deal this game is. And it, it is cool, though. You sit and you kind of look around, and you're like, man, this is like the pinnacle of your career. And then you realize, oh, shoot, I don't want to drop a touchdown pass in this <laughs> game and be, and be the go and, and, and the scapegoat and, and lose this game for my team. And, and that kind of sets in, too. And so there's just a lot on your mind going to that game. And uh, But listen, what, what's the and you start hitting and, and the game is going, you get in that same rhythm and zone and that's kind of all blocked out and it's just a football game at that point. Dennis and so um, I, I look back at that game and it's just such a cool thing to look back at and say, man, I was a part of that. It's a Super Bowl. You just remember everything and you're looking at it like, oh man, that was, that was really cool. And, and I think it takes being done with it and looking back to really appreciate what you did, what you accomplished, and what you were a part of. Dennis, you mentioned that somebody affiliated with BYU is going to lose a Super Bowl, but that also means somebody related or, you know, with BYU is going to win a Super Bowl. Just your thoughts overall on, on Fred Warner and Daniel Sorensen and what they've done this year, as well as Andy Reid, and then, and then who you got winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it, yeah, the, the cool thing is somebody will, will win that game. And the, the tough part is somebody will lose. And so, you know, you look at both teams. I think these are the two best teams in the NFL. Now, now I, that's a tough statement for me because my Ravens were looked unbeatable all year. Um, but they just didn't have that playoff experience. They didn't play well in, in, in um, that big game and just didn't. I, I felt like they pressed a little bit and panicked a little bit in their playoff game and got out of what they're, they do. And so that being said, I think these are the two most deserving teams to be in the Super Bowl. So I love this matchup. Uh, you look at what Fred Warner and that 49ers defense brings to the table. I, I mean, that's been the best defense in the NFL consistently through the regular season, through the postseason. And a huge part of what they do is because of Fred. And Fred has led that team in tackles by a wide margin now, I think, for the second or third consecutive year. Uh, you look at his athletic ability. You can't lead your team in tackles. And really, he should be amongst the NFL leaders. He's not. He's top 20. But he should be amongst the NFL leaders in tackles. 
but that defense just doesn't give teams a lot of plays and a lot of possessions. And so he doesn't have as many opportunities to make tackles. But to lead that defense by a big margin in tackles says a lot about his ability. And you can't just be a good athlete to lead your team in tackles. You have to be instinctual. You have to have a, um, a nose for the football, have, have that savvy and that ability to, to just know where the ball is going at all times. And so he's got that. And he's really a cornerstone for that defense and one of their young pillars moving forward. And so I, I'm so excited about his career. He's going to get paid handsomely and rewarded handsomely there in, in, in San Francisco at some point. And, uh, just has an incredibly bright, bright future. And so you look on the other side and it's, it's Andy Reid, which I think we're all secretly pulling for Andy Reid, whether you're a Kansas City fan or not. And, uh, you know, he, he's a Hall of Fame coach, in my opinion, whether he wins this game or not. I mean, he's just done too much throughout his coaching career and been too successful to say otherwise. Uh, but this would just – it would be the icing on the cake for him, for fans, and vindication that he is, in, in my opinion and in most people's opinions, um, one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in the NFL. And so uh, I, I'll be pulling for him this week. So it's, now I've got friends on, on, the, on the 49ers, and this is, this is tough for me. I love both teams, but I'm pulling for Kansas City this week. And, and I didn't mention Dan Sorensen, Dirty Dan, I guess they call him. But um, he's just the epitome of, uh, you know, a guy that worked his way to where he is. And he started as a just simply a special teams player. And if you're willing to just do the dirty work as a special teams player, you'll get an opportunity in that league. And he understood that, and he worked hard at that phase, and it's opened doors for him now on defense. And really he's had a great career and a promising future because of his ability to just do the little things and and provide effort and consistency uh, on special teams that has really gave him a great opportunity. And so – I, you know, I, I don't really have a big dog in this fight, but I, I, I'm going to be with you, Jason. I'm going to go with Kansas City. I just think they're too potent on offense, and uh, I'm pulling for Andy Reid to get this one done. All right, man. I appreciate it. Glad to hear you're on my side. Dennis, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Great insight. And uh, and I'm sure that when Jerem's gone, we'll talk to you again soon. Hey, thanks, Dennis. Good to have you, man. Yeah, next time he's gone. Thanks for the time, guys. I just appreciate you making time for me. You bet. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Great stuff, man. Always good to talk to you. That was Dennis Pitt on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why. We show how. And before